good uh, good morning we are looking at the mechanics of uh, respiration under mechanics of respiration we are looking at uh, muscles used for breathing the muscles used for breathing my name is uh, mr siwale donut So first of all, this topic, when you hear mechanics of breathing, usually we look at four things. We look at uh, muscles used for breathing. We also look at the lung compliance. And then we also look at air for, uh, airflow pressure and resistance relationships. And then we look at uh, breathing cycle. So these concepts are important when you're describing uh, mechanics of breathing. Okay. Because if you remember mechanics of breathing, we look at processes of uh, inspiration, processes of expiration, and how these processes affect volume, how it affects airflow, and how it affects pressures within the lungs and the, the, the thoracic cavity. Okay. So what are these muscles uh, of uh, respiration? We'll start with muscles that are involved in inspiration and the muscles that are involved in expiration. So we know inspiring is to breathe in, okay, for air to move into the lungs. So we have this, uh, we have the accessory muscles and the principal muscles, which are involved in inspiration. The accessory muscles, we have what we call the stenocleidomastoid. Stenocleidomastoid. So the function of this uh, stenocleidomastoid it elevates the sternum okay the stenocleidomastoid is one of the largest and most superficial cervical muscles muscles around the uh, the neck and so apart from uh, involving itself in uh, respiration or inspiration the stenocleidomastoid is involved in rotation of the head to the opposite side and also in the flexion of the neck okay this muscle, the stenocleidomastoid, is innervated by the accessory nerves. So it works uh, with the scalene muscles in the neck during forced inspiration. Uh, during forced in inspiration while breathing. So as I said, the function of this uh, stenocleidomastoid is to raise the sternum. Which one is the sternum? As you can see, there is a sternum there. Okay, It raises the sternum. This is the bone in the neck during, uh, uh, this is a bone at the front of the rib cage. Okay, so this is a muscle of inspiration which is involved during forced expiration like when you're doing exercise. And then we have the principal muscles. The principal muscles of inspiration are external intercostal muscles and the inter, uh, interchondral part of the internal intercostal muscles they also elevates the rib. Don't confuse the external intercostal muscles with the internal intercostal muscles. Okay, the external intercostal muscles, these are responsible for forced and quiet inhalation. Okay, so they raise the ribs and expand the chest cavity. Okay, they raise the ribs and expand the chest cavity. When the ribs are raised, it means the, 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 the chest cavity expands, the volume increases, but the pressure reduces. That's why they are involved in uh, inspiration. Now, the, uh, the external intercostal muscles from your anatomy, you are going to see that they originate from the rib number one, somewhere there. Okay, rib number one to rib 11. And they also, they insert in rib two to 12. But when you look at the inter internal intercostal muscles, they are, these are involved in forced exhalation, like breathing out. Okay, but these are involved in uh, forced inspiration when you're like, for example, doing exercise. Now, these mus uh, muscles, the external intercostal muscles, they are both innervated by uh, what you call the intercostal nerves, okay? Intercostal nerves. The intercostal nerve is the ventral rami of the thoracic spinal nerve. The intercostal nerve is the ventral rami of the 
thoracic spinal nerve. Rami, if you want, you can call it Rami, R-A-M-I. Rami is a, it's just a word meaning a branching of a nerve. So these are under the influence of the nerve called the intercostal nerve. Okay. And then the diaphragm, the diaphragm is the dome-shaped structure. This increases the vertical dimension of the thoracic cavity. It also elevates the, the, the lower ribs. Okay. As we know, the diaphragm is a skeletal muscle. It's a skeletal muscle. It sits at the base, at the base of the chest, and it separates the abdomen from the chest. Okay, it's a dome-shaped structure. What's the action of this same diaphragm? The action of the diaphragm, it contracts. When it contracts or flattens, uh, inhalation takes place. Okay, so the diaphragm creates a vacuum effect that pulls air into the, into the lungs. However, when the diaphragm relaxes, air moves out of the lungs. Okay. So uh, it might not be clear, but it's a do uh, I'll show you another diagram. It's a dome-shaped uh, structure. Let me just show you this diagram here. Uh, not here. Each other one. Okay. This is a diaphragm which I'm talking about. It's a dome-shaped uh, structure. So this diaphragm, it's innervated by the phrenic nerve, which is formed from the cervical nerves. Okay, nerves from the cervical region, from the neck. Uh, so it's innervated by the phrenic nerve. Uh, according to his, uh, from, from anatomy, the, this cervical nerves C3, C4, and C5. Okay. It is also innervated by the lower intercostal muscles. So that's a diaphragm. It's a skeletal muscles and it is also supplied with a lot of blood through the uh, pericardiophrenic artery. So it's an artery associated with supplying uh, blood, the pericardiophrenic artery. Okay, let's go back to this diagram. So that's a diaphragm. So during quiet expiration, expiration results from passive and elastic recoil of the lungs the rib cage and the diaphragm. So during quiet, it's a passive process. The, the, the muscles just relaxes, the, the pressure increases, forcing air out of the, of, the, of the thoracic cavity. Now, during active breathing, the muscles involved in expiration, we have the internal intercostal muscles, okay, and the abdominal muscles. These, they pull the ribs down. They compress the abdominal contents, therefore pushing the diaphragm up. Okay, not shown. There's what you call the quadratus lumborium. It pulls the ribs down. Okay, it's not shown here. So the abdominal, they pull the ribs down, compress the abdominal content, thus pushing the diaphragm. Let me just show you the diagram of the abdominal ribs. I mean, the diagram of the abdominal muscles used for respiration. So, these are the four muscles. We have the external abdominal oblique. As you can see, this is located on the side and front of the abdomen. We also have the rectus abdominis. This is located along the front of the abdomen. This is the most well-known abdominal, often referred to as the six-pack. Okay, it's a rectus abdominis. And then we have uh, here, it's called the internal abdominal oblique. It is located under the external obliques, running in the opposite direction. Oblique, making an oblique angle. Okay. And then we have the transverse abdominis. This is located under the obliques. Okay, it is the deepest of the abdominal muscles and wraps around the, around the spine for protection and stability. Okay, so these abdominal muscles, they are used for, for active expiration when somebody is doing exercise. So when they contract, the abdominal muscle, they increase the abdominal pressure 
and when the abdominal pressures, it pushes the, di the, the diaphragm. It pushes the diaphragm. So when the, uh, the diaphragm has been pushed upwards, there is uh, pressure changes. It raises the pleural pressure and the alveolar pressure. Pressure in the alveoli or in the lungs, it raises that pressure. So this will drive air out of the, of the lungs. Okay, let me just repeat. When they contract the intra-abdominal pressure, they increase the, the inter, uh, what you call the intra-abdominal pressure, it increases. It pushes on the diaphragm. The diaphragm pushes upwards and it raises the pleural pressure and the alveolar pressure. These pressures will drive air out because we know that air moves from a region of high concentration or from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. So abdominal muscles, they are innervated also by various nerves. They are innervated by lower intercostal nerves, okay, the iliohypogastric nerves, and there's also what you call the ileoingenial nerves. Okay, so these are some of the things you can check in your anatomy books. But we have the thoracoabdominal uh, nerves, which is the major innervation of these uh, muscles. Okay, so this is just the, the diagram which I had showed earlier on the, the location of the diaphragm. Inhalation, it's caused when the diaphragm contracts. So air moves into the lungs. And then exhalation, when the diaphragm relaxes, okay, the rib cages get smaller and rib muscles relax. Air is moved out of the lungs. So in summary, the muscles of respiration, we need to categorize those that are involved in respiration. We have the diaphragm and the external intercostal muscles and accessory muscles. These are not used for inspiration during normal quiet breathing, but are used during exercise. But the diaphragm is the most important, which contributes about 60 to 70% uh, of uh, inspira inspiratory effort. It comes from the diaphragm. And then the muscles of expiration, most of the muscles are active. I, I mean, they are passive because the lung chest wall system is elastic. Okay, it returns to its resting position after inspiration. Expiration, expiratory muscles are used during exercise or when airway resistance is increased because of diseases such as asthma, which is, a, uh, which is some kind of a obstructive pulmonary disease. So it increases the work of the muscles. Okay, so expiration muscles are used during exercise. We'll look at this later on. The abdominal muscles compresses the abdominal cavity and push the diaphragm up. And then there is the uh, intercostal muscles which push the ribs downwards and inwards. So let us know these muscles which are involved in, uh, uh, in breathing. Okay. So this is where I end on the muscles of uh, respiration.